This is Lisa, and I'm here for a little small talk with Karen Davis, author of Life, Love, and Locks, Real World Advice for the Modern Jewish Girl. Welcome, Karen. Hi, Lisa. So I had a chance to read through the book. Here it is. And I have to be honest, it wasn't really quite what I expected. You tackle topics such as what to wear to a shiva, how to navigate the food at Jewish simchas, pick up Jewish pickup lines, and a whole section committed to Jewish hair. So I want to know why did you write this book? Um, well, it kind of started with the singles columns that I write for the Jewish Journal of uh, Greater Los Angeles. And people started writing in and not only saying, hey, that's great, you write about a Jewish life I can relate to, but they started asking me all kinds of questions. So where can you get half price high holiday tickets? And what should I dress up as for Purim? And where do all the hot guys volunteer? So I would describe it as Sex in the City meets Jewish Studies, kind of Carrie Bradshaw meets Anita, Anita Diamant, sort of. So it's um, a great primer for Judaism, um, and at the same time wrapped in a fun, chiclet sort of wrapper. It is funny because I'm like, well, I know this, and I know this, but I don't know that. So it did seem like a basic primer um, covering a lot of different topics. Tell us a little bit about some of the, some of the topics you covered, and what, maybe, what was your favorite, favorite part of writing the book? Um, well, so I try to basically cover most of the Jewish calendar as well as the basics of daily Jewish life. So how to find a congregation that you click with or how to find a community group to volunteer with um, through finding your mention a haystack kind of stuff. So it kind of goes through everything that people might face during their daily Jewish life, whether it's my in-laws decided to invite themselves to a Shabbat dinner and I have no idea what to make or it's Passover and my friends have no place to go. Um, to everything from um, kosher kissing is the first uh, actual topic, which is if I keep kosher and I go on a date with the guy and I eat milk and he eats meat, can I kiss him at dinner? Or is that kind of breaking those mixing milk and meat laws? And when you tell people that, do they think that's outrageous? They get it? I mean, how does, how does that work exactly? Especially the guys that you're on a date with. <laughs> Most people actually laugh when they hear it. Um, and it's funny because after I actually have mentioned that one to people, they say, actually, what is the answer to that? So what are the rules about that? Uh, well, like I said, surprisingly, there's no actual ancient Talmudic ruling on this one. So there really aren't rules. Um, I think it sort of depends, like a lot of things in Judaism, people interpret for themselves and bring it into their lives in the way that makes sense for them. So same with this, you know, kiss at dinner, kiss goodnight, or if you don't like them, don't kiss them at all. So let's go back and talk about who the book is for. Um, tell, tell me who you wrote the book for exactly. Um, well, I wrote the book basically for the same audience that reads my singles columns, which is a fairly broad audience. Um, if you're already observant, there's a lot of information in the book that you'll already know, but it's presented in a fun, fresh, humorous kind of way, and there's definitely jokes and nods in there to Jews who get it. Um, to people who are just more beginners, it's the perfect primer. Um, it's something they can pull out in a second if they're running to synagogue and don't know what to wear, or running to a bat mitzvah and don't really know what's going on, um, or honestly, if they want to do Tu Bishvat and really don't even remember what that is. So it sort of hits a broad audience and will bring different things to different people. I don't know that I have a, uh, a favorite chapter. Um, it was fun to write the dating chapter in the sense that that's kind of what I write about normally and expand that. And also, um, people are always asking me about, you know, why I date only Jews. And this was a nice way to kind of have a platform to talk to people, uh, people about that. So I have to know, are, are you still dating Todd from the Too Cool for Shul chapter? <laughs> um, the one who I met at the Federation event? Uh, I actually am, yes. All right. <laughs> So, uh, yes, he was happy to know that the way we met is now going to be read by Jews across the country. I just wasn't sure how, how dated the information was because you dated somebody earlier in the book and then there was Todd all of a sudden. I'm like, what happened to the other guy? I remember now. I did actually meet him volunteering at a Federation event and it was one of those mornings where it was a Sunday morning and I got up and I actually was like, I'm not going to go to this. I'm just going to sleep in. And in the back of my mind was my mom's voice saying like, why don't you volunteer more and you should, you know, go to all your Federation events. So I did and that's where I met him. This so, um, you're young, you're not single anymore, but you're young and you're Jewish. What do you feel are the greatest challenges for, for young people today, young Jewish people today? Um, well, I'll young Jewish women, since that's who the book's aimed at. I think one of the interesting things is that different than our mom's generation, 
there can be 20 years between the time a girl pledges AEFI and actually settles down to have a family. So, you know, we're too old for Temple Youth Group, but we're too old to have kids in Tat Shabbat. So sometimes one of the biggest challenges, I think, is carving out our place in the community, whether that's within a synagogue or within the federation or doing your own thing. But I, I would say that that's kind of the biggest challenge. I find that a lot of people in our community um, struggle with really where's their, where's their place. And I always encourage people just to get involved in some way. Find your niche and find something that you're interested in and get involved. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the themes of the book is trying to find ways to seamlessly integrate Judaism into your own life. Um, it's like Judaism doesn't need to be like your kosher kitchen with your Jewish life on one side and the whole rest of your life on the other side. You can actually bring them together and whether that means having your friends over for a Shabbat dinner party or actually going to services on a Saturday morning, it's different for everybody. But I think the idea is to find a way to bring it into your life that's fun and feels organic. Uh, if you want more info about the book, if you want to read some of my singles columns or some excerpts from the book, you can go to my website, which is www.lifelovelocks.com. Super. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today, Karen. This is Lisa, here for a little small talk, a production of Let My People Know, an outreach and engagement initiative. Thank you again.